The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Very important session today, folks. It isn't often that a Fed meeting coincides. I remember one distinctly where it was a Fed meeting, oh, it must be 15 years or so ago, where immediately after the meeting, we, we started a two times short uh, Dow position, which worked out well. Otherwise, I just cannot remember when a Fed meeting actually coincided at the exact bottom or the exact top of a particular market cycle. So all I can say is that um, within the context of what we're looking at here, I'm going to go through exactly what I, I would be looking at in terms of a reversal regardless of what the Fed does. Okay, so let's just start off here. We've got a little doji candle and a leg E. If you just look at the chart pattern, you look at this almost, let me just draw this in. I don't want to mess this up. I'll do this live so I can take it off very quickly. Uh, let's just go from here. I've got a, a technique that I call Chapman Wave Parallel Extension. It's the one-to-one -one parallel extension. There are certain cases where I use it and there are certain cases where I just have it there sitting there saying, hey, are you able to do anything? Uh, and if not, uh, why? So here we are. Look at this. The Dow move. Let's just add this new peril, make this light green. There it is. Easy, easy. Right there it is. And I'll start off there. And what do we have? We have a rally that could go to 36,600. That's on the one-to-one -one extension from 32,586 to the high of 34,588 on the June the 16th. So it's from the 25th, a month later, less than a month later, on the 16th of June. It stalls, it comes back down. So you can call this an A to B equals C to D. It's got that pattern. But I like to use it as a, you see the d degree, the angle. The time lapse is a little longer. And when it's longer, then you always get a variation. So within that context, we are within a range, but that's just on the price. If you look at the indicators that I use, and I, I have to confess, we are short the Dow. Uh, we've been along, uh, you know, from 2020, from the low of 2020, from the low of 2023. Um, we've had trading positions short and long, mostly long. This is the first time we've gone short in a little while. And here we are. We are short. And at this point, it's just a little underwater, but that's not the issue. The issue is <clears throat> I based it on a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look at that peak D, this, this sharp sell-off we had on the 16th of June. Uh, very often, especially with the Dow, Ds become really important. That is the fourth highest peak in the Chapman Wave. Well, so far, it hasn't worked in the sense that we've gone to higher highs. Not only that, we've gone... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This would be the 13th day if there's a green candle, even if it's by 0 0.05. It doesn't matter. It could be underneath yesterday's 35,527 high. But here's what I'm looking at. And this is something that I've, I went through yesterday. I went through when I was interviewed uh, by Tom yesterday as well. But I need to discuss it again. I need to discuss it sort of for myself because I was a little ahead of what we should be looking at. And I actually, let me do this. It'll be so much clearer and so much easier. I've got a bunch of questions that I do want to get to, but at the same time, I need to just articulate my thoughts, mentioning right at the opening that it is seldom in my experience, I haven't gone back to actually notate it, I'm just doing it by memory, but very seldom have we got a significant turnaround from the day of the Fed speak. This happens to coincide with other areas that say to me, wow, I've got so many peak Ds and Es in the, in the Chapman Wave methodology in so many of the instruments that we look at, this is exactly the time where we should have a breather. But wait a minute. This technique that I use, the 914, is the one technique that, I wonder if I can just do this to demonstrate it live. Let me just see if I can do that. 
Uh, yes, I'll demonstrate it live just to show you something. Yesterday, I never expected it, so I just missed it completely because my expectation, my head was one way and the, the reality was another. But in my show, at exactly this time yesterday, the 9 p.m. moving average crossed positive in the 10-minute E-mini chart. It did not close negative until for one very brief moment at 4.10, 10 minutes past the opening Eastern time yesterday. Look at that move. It went to a peak E, and then it turned down. Had one more pop for the M-shaped formation, and then plunged down. Then went into this long rectangle, narrow rectangle, and is pulling back since then. And it's been pink ever since it crossed negative at 10 to 5 this morning, uh, and it remains negative as we as we are talking right now. So that's the power. It doesn't matter the time frame. This is the power of this particular technique. So now let's go back to our story. And our story says, okay, using that technique in the daily Dow chart, and I showed this one to subscribers on my opening call back in May the 3rd, 2023, when the Dow was at 33,684. I discussed how this right shoulder looked like it was in a turn down, that we could, in fact, start to go down. And, of course, we did go down because it deflected lower. And then the 9 period moving average turned pink. And it stayed pink until the crossover back in June, uh, June the 5th. So now we are still green. Having held, um, fortunately, we've held the low from October and we're still holding the low, uh, the long position. But this is different. Look, just using this one technique, if I, we had trades, I'm not going to talk about the trades because they, they passed tense. Most of them worked out really nicely um, using the three times long. But look at this. Look how high the price of this is a, a closing price chart. Look how high the the gray nine sorry the gray Dow chart price movement is up there. Here's the nine. It's way above the nine. The nine is way above the fourteen. To get that negative, you'd have to have some really bad dark news to just not just once, but days on end. It'll take almost a week or ten days of just hammering away at bad news. For the, for the Dow to plunge into the 34,200s, where I think that's where you would see the green turn to pink. That's the Dow. Here's the S&P. Getting closer, much closer. Look how it's working very hard to remain, the, the price of the S&P, to remain above the 9, but the 9 is still way above the 14. That's a good sign. And the the uh, S&P right now is down 5. Uh, you look at the QQQ, it's a little different chart again, one, two, three, D different. Look how close it's getting. It's getting closer and closer, but it hasn't turned down. I suspect if the Qs go to 371, they're at 377 right now, that's about uh, or nearly 2% drop. Then you'll get the green going negative and you get the price down quite sharply. IWM is actually holding pretty well. It could deflect it higher. But it's done that before, and then it's come down sharply. But here it is, at this very moment, up a dollar uh, and three cents at 195.98. So I'm using this, and I'm saying, wait a minute, and the SMH is close to 30 negative. It's down a dollar 52 at 154.81. But look at this. Um, the nine is still over the 40, but it's getting closer and closer. But it hasn't turned down. I will be right back down, down three. <laughs> a determined down. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so let me just go finish this up and then I've got just a ton of food today. I'm just going through stocks after this is done. We've got uh, the dollar down, only down three ticks right now. It's holding very well at 126 it, the nine period moving average is still pink. It's got a long way to go. It will probably be about 101.90 to 102.32. That area will start to see the pink nine period moving average getting close to turning up. The MACD is good. It's not great. It's just it's turned positive. Stochastics is lousy at 41%. And uh, we're looking at the EUR USD just quickly. Here we go. It's pulled back. It's trying to, it's under the uh, 14 period moving average. So I've had to put a down arrow. It's in a sell mode. It's actually sell signal to sell mode. Uh, it needs a lot of work to change that to get back into a buy signal again. Uh, but and there's a peak D probably this week. We're watching it closely. USD JPY is the uh, yen dollar yen currency pair. Sharp pullback actually from a peak B. Uh, the these. Uh, MACD hasn't turned positive. The, the 9 hasn't turned positive over the 14. Stochastic's at 52%. It's got a lot of work to do. And that just tells me that any rally in the dollar is probably going to be shorter term. Not short term, but shorter term. And we're watching that closely. Look at this high-grade copper. Let me just finish this up. High-grade copper in the higher range at the 200-period moving average. It's been stuck there for a while. But it is, sorry, it's in the higher range of this, what I call the rectangle formation. Uh, it hasn't really broken out. It'll break out. It's at, at 3.89. It'll break out if it can get to 4.01, something in that area. And I just wanted to show you crude oil is trying its best to get to that uh, higher high. Uh, it's at a leg C. It'll make a peak C if it doesn't go in the continuous contract, doesn't go above the high of yesterday, which was 79.90. At 79.91 today, it extends leg C. If it's tomorrow, it goes to a leg D. It's in D in the weekly chart, a very quick one in a very narrow range. So this is a very good bounce. I don't know if it's more than that just at the moment. And this is quickly at U.S. bonds. Spoke about that earlier uh, when I did the update. U.S. bonds in the lower range, meaning the yields are up in the upper range. They haven't broken out yet. Okay. Now, let's just go. So yesterday, I, I didn't see until the last minute. And then, I, actually, I didn't see until last night. CVNA. CVNA. There's a Corvana. Um Chris said that they, they've got the, they've had it for a while. They're thinking that it's getting a little overbought. 
I just quickly sent out an email saying, I would have said to you yesterday when I saw, if I had seen your email at 10.15 when you sent it, I would have said, just because you asked me the question means that you're a little bit nervous. Why don't you just ease your, your, your nervousness by taking something off immediately, just a small tad, just a small portion, and try to even think of it as a portion that you're going to take off, but you're splitting it in two. You're taking off one portion immediately, and then you look at the number that you say, okay, if it drops under this level, I definitely want a lighter position in this stock. It's done fantastically the week, Kovana. Uh, online order sales. I'm not sure why it's gone from uh, under a dollar. Yeah, is that what is that? Uh, was that the low? Yes. Oh, sorry, not under a dollar. Three six three fifty five was the low back in December of 2022, and it just hit the other day. Give me a break. Fifty seven. <laughs> Fifty seven. Wow. I mean, that's a what twelve bagger or something. Okay. What we're looking at though is the it looks very much like a short squeeze. And if you've got the gap and it's trying to fill the gap from about five sessions, six sessions ago, it's trying to fill that gap. So guess what I'm looking at? You've had a spectacular position. I don't know in this particular environment where, where the Carvana has enough, say, electric vehicles, uh, the EVs, that it's going to make up to, for, for an increase. I mean, I don't know what the PE is, but this looks to me like it is extremely overboard. So I would take more than a tad off, and I would keep a core position because you're much lower down, and I'd wiggle around looking to buy and sell um, within the context of 50 is probably going to be, no, I'd say 47 is probably 47 to 48 could probably be upside resistance over the next couple of weeks. But I wouldn't be surprised if this actually tests the 30, 39 area, just under the 14 period moving average. That's 4, that's 10 percent below this. So I'm going to suggest if you haven't done it already, take a little bit more. There is a story here, maybe out of all those vending machine uh, car operators, uh, salespeople. This is this is the one to be in. I this looks, it looks to me like a short squeeze on the weekly chart, and that's very unusual. So I'm just thinking the 39 to 36 areas, probably that's going to be a really good test of, of 2023, this year's upside potential. Oh, yeah, I think that's what I, I'm, I'm comfortable saying that. Um, I'm wrong if it will have to have speed to correct everything that's happened now on the downside. Otherwise, it gets a, a short-term Eiffel Tower pattern straight up, straight down. And making the 3460, what is it? Yeah, 3460 low that was on the 13th of July. That's going to absolutely be key. Meantime, that's what I'm recommending. The other one that you asked about, I believe, is open. Uh, that's Open Door Tech Inc. And I'm not sure where you got into this. This one's a little different. This is at 443. I would have said yesterday, just because you asked the question, it also made a peak. Uh, uh, this was a peak F. What was that? CV. And A, was that a peak F? No, it was a peak E. So this is a peak F in the daily chart, peak E in the weekly chart. Monthly look looks horrible, but this is a really nice start to the upside. This is a little different. It's up today, 10 cents at 4.45. I think this has a story attached to it. I don't quite know what the story is, Open Door Tech Inc. But most importantly, I like the way that it's steadily come down. It held above the left side low of the 355-ish area, trying to rally. So this one I'm saying take a little bit off. And in this particular instance, I would take a little bit off and I'd wait two sessions. Now I'd wait until Friday at 4 o'clock. If by Friday at 4 o'clock this has not taken out the low of three days ago, which is 442, even if it hasn't gone up very much, but it's holding steady, that's all I, all I would do is I'd take a little bit off and I'd assess. And the reason why I'm saying that, because of the weekly chart, the steadiness that it made higher highs and higher lows, even though there's a lot of parallels with the chart pattern, I like this one because I think there's the, the price action is telling me there's a story behind this. Why? Look at the way it pushed. It used the 200 period moving average. I already notated this is one that was, I can't remember now if it's even on my list. I think it's one of those that might be even on my list. Um, as stocks that um, are watching stocks, let me just go to this. Uh, open, open, open. Uh, 
L M R. Yes, I've got it on my list. I, I knew I recognized it. I'd already done all the work for it, but once it broke out, I thought, whoops, we missed it. I did a beautiful left side, right side, cup formation, time match. That's the, the, the price symmetry. And now it's gone a little bit higher. And then it went a lot higher. I mean, over the 200 period moving average which was resistance, then it became a trampoline support. I kind of like this. So I'm just saying, take a little bit off. Just money management says you've had a really good gain. It looks like the market could, it doesn't have to, but it could become a little vulnerable over the next few days going into Monday of next week. So you might be involved there. So if it's all right now, if it takes out the next few days the 442 level, then I take another little bit off. Then it's got that dreaded H pattern. But in the meantime, I haven't even been able to put a down arrow in it, so it's looking good. Uh, Dow's up six, I'll be right back. Attention traders, Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power-packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought-after newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7 a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets, and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees, and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at TFNN you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry tedious text either TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at tfnn.com or on tfnn's youtube channel and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Hi, folks. I'm not sure whether I'm back on again. I'm just going to keep talking, and as soon as it's, uh, we'll see if that's working good. Okay, got this out. Um, so uh, we have. I'm. I cannot hear. Al, can you give me some sound, please? Good morning, Basil. How are uh, you? Good morning, Earl. How are you? I haven't heard from you in a little while. What are we going to look at? Basil, I'm the blessed of the Lord. And I hope you are, too. Uh, I, let's take a look at TLT. 
Yes, sure. What would you? What are you doing, and uh, what what can I do for you? Well, I'm in the camp that we're headed into re- a strong recession, and I want to. I'd like to take a look at TLT, you know, in the short end, and going into that. So, you know, it's for me, the chart formation itself has been a very easy chart formation to read. I suspect that over the next, this is a weekly chart right here, if you can see it, the one in the middle is the TL, on the left is the daily, in the middle is the weekly, the TLT, the iShares Treasury Bond uh, ETF, and on the right is the monthly chart in a sharp down move that keeps making these dreaded H patterns. That looks like a lowercase h. Fails on the left side, makes a lower low. Fails on the left side, makes a lower low. Fails on the left side at a peak A or a B, makes a lower low. Fails again at an A, but it hasn't made a lower low yet. And that lower low is 88, uh, sorry, 90, 91.85. So. Within that context, what we're looking at is the rectangle formation in the weekly chart has the, a larger arch formation, which goes from 91.85 up to 100 and just about 110, pulls back to 98.88, bounces again, goes to about 109 or 108, pulls back, and it makes a slightly lower low at 98 point, uh, was it 85, three cents lower than the one that was made back in uh, March. And what happens is each arch is making a lower turnaround. In other words, it doesn't go towards the high of the previous one. It keeps making a lower one. So what we're seeing is lower, lower highs and lower lows, but all within the rectangle formation. So I'm going to make it just real simple now. I'm trying to make it simple for months and months, saying we're in this trading band. If you look at the TBT, which I always like to do, I like to do opposing uh, chart formations that says on the one hand this, and on the other hand that, just like an economist says. On the one hand, we could get a recession. On the other hand, we don't have to get a recession. So, But we're looking at it just in terms of you're thinking that if yields go much higher – which is what you're thinking, they will go higher, then that's going to impact the market. That will probably impact areas that it hasn't so far, like the HGX, which is the housing sector, which is um, up in, at all-time highs. As we're speaking, it's within just a points of all-time high, which is un unbelievably unusual. I mean, we just do not see charts like this. Under There are so many patterns that we're looking at now that for those of us who have been around the block a few times, this is so unusual. I'm sure I could say to you, um, Earl, if I had said to you rates are going to go from almost zero to 4%, 5%, or even 6%, uh, say let's talk about this as more in line of the 30-year um, uh, uh, treasury, treasury bond yield. Um, you would not think that the housing sector – would go to an all-time high. So there's there are so many other factors going on. If I say to you, um, in this environment, with all the bad news, with emails, I'm sure you get them as well. Every um, hour of the day, what is my last one yet? It says, um, have you got out of your bank? What, what is it? Protect your uh, wealth. Is your bank uh, is your uh, your bank about to go uh, insolvent? Just over and over and over could scare the daylights at everyone, and yet you've got PAVE, which is the um, Global X U.S. Infrastructure Development ETF, at an all-time high, as we'll speak in this minute, 32.13. Um, so I, I want you to put into perspective to say that if it's going to be bonds, and I'm just going back to the TBT for a moment, because that's the inverse of the TLT. That is up in the higher range, but it hasn't really broken out. In fact, the weekly chart has already made a peak D and it's pulling back towards the mid-level of this long rectangle, which is at 29.80. A close under 29.80 says, oops, be a little careful because it go even lower. But this is basically we're looking at the yield, and I'm going to go to the TNX for the moment. TNX, there it is. TNX has got a peak C in the weekly. It did break out 
from the down trend, the down channel actually, but it's come back to retest it. And the monthly chart on a purely visual basis, and you always got to be careful because the visual basis sometimes, if you don't put it together with the technicals, can give you a false sense of something. It looks, in this particular case, it looks a little toppy. But in fact, the nine period moving average is way above the 14, which says there's still internal strength in the 10 year Treasury note. So I need to just give you background because what I wanted to say to you is I would personally look at levels that pertain to the direction, the bigger direction. And as far as I'm concerned, if the TLT trading at 101.46, on a weekly basis, not just intra a week, but on a weekly basis, actually closes under 97, I could say 98. I'm going to give it a point, 97. I think that changes the scenario very much. And it says that those yields that we were looking at a moment ago and that cup formation that was trying to form in the monthly chart of the 10-year, let me just see if, I, if I've got the TYX. Uh, yep, the TYX. You see, the 10 year is a little stronger than the 30 year T bond interest rate continuous contract. Uh, let me just go back there and say TNX.X. Yeah, just not intra month, but not where we stand right now, but intra month, it did go to a, uh, a higher high than the last peak. So there's a slight difference. So I'm just going to make it as clear as possible. If you've got the patience, um, you're going to have to wait. And the reason why I say that is that what the Fed announces today, uh, it, it seems pretty certain that they'll talk about you know, doing something immediately with rates. Right. It's really what they, it's the outlook. But if you're looking at what I think they do look at, and they have to look at it if they already do their, their, their due diligence, look at the way the DB Agricultural Fund has acted. And I actually put these two together in the sense that if you look at the monthly chart of the agricultural fund, it's got the same cup shape as the TNX. Not the daily, not the weekly so much, and not even so much the daily, but the monthly. So I, I think that if they're looking at inflation, there have been a lot of areas that have seen a deflationary aspect in, in over the last couple of months. But in fact, you can't exclude the grains, and the grains really pertain to everything that's, you know, everything that most people need to buy in the supermarket. Not have, not, not have a choice. But they really need to buy that stuff. So I'm just going to say to you, well, actually, hold on a sec, because there's one other thing that I want to look at. I'd like to give you kind of comprehensive look, because I need it for myself. So hold on, I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. We're back with a looking at the LT is a bulletproof tool, speak, bulletproof materials, uh, manufactured components. I think C in the monthly chart just says it should still go to a deal, though I had one moment that I could have called a, a, a phantom peak. So this could be a D. That's not the point. It's got a D in the weekly chart, peak D in the daily. And I'm just going to say to you, Earl, if you start to see BLDR at 141, start to trade at 137 or lower. If you start to see Toll Brothers, T-O-L, oops, T-O-L, uh, a peak D in the daily, actually it went to squeak to an E and then a D in the weekly and a leg D in the monthly. If you see at 80.34, you see it trading at 78. Coincide, it has to coincide with the TLT breaking under 98 or 97 support I think that those yields, you're absolutely correct. The yields are going to go much higher. But at the same time, I'm just going to say to you, I would not immediately presuppose that we have to have a recession. I think this is a, this is a very complicated market. And there are other things that could ameliorate the usual term of the, the expression. Because even last year, even when we had before, quarter after quarter of really lousy earnings. They never called it a recession, but you've had sex sectors like the semiconductors, like uh, so many, some, even the housing sectors that at some point had recessionary months of downside activity. So that's what I'm telling you that I'm looking at right now. And if the TLT goes above 105.30 in the next two, three weeks, then we're just stuck in the range with yields. I wouldn't consider yields to be the issue. The issue will become uh, yields are important and affecting the market if you see those components that I'm talking about come down. I hope that helps you. gives you a bit of, better sense of what I'm looking at. Nobody is better than you at, at analyzing, Basil. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, we should get that as a quote. <laughs> and, and I appreciate your input. <laughs> thank you very much, Earl. Hope to speak to you soon. So thank All you right, for going. Thank you. Thank you. So here we go. I've got questions. I'm going to go backwards. Rivian is a question. Um, Rivian, I actually wanted to buy a Rivian, but the way it gapped up uh, and it kept moving through the 20s, and now it's going to peak E slash A, F slash B. This is C. Yeah, it is indeed. This is what I'm saying. I don't care about the Fed right now. I'm looking at so many positions, uh, so many sectors, so many stocks, so many key indicators at Chapman, leg D or peak D. Uh, in the daily charts or E or F. I think that a lot of these things are somewhat vulnerable. I do like it very much. I think it's not an alternative to Tesla, but it's in the category of what do we buy if we've missed Tesla? And that, and this is actually goes for the, the car as well as the uh, the stock. So I like it very much, but I think that the gap at twenty in the 22s is at 26.98. At some point between 24 and 22, it'll pull back. So if you're looking to buy, I would hold off just a little bit longer uh, and see if I can get some kind of a pullback. I do like it. Uh, next question came in was MDY, MD, 
MNDY, I think that's what it was. And I didn't have a chance to put it in the notation. Monday.com, I think they, uh, I can't remember now what they do. Um, so if it's a .com, it obviously is uh, something to do with data. But it's, I like it very much. It's trading at 179.66. MNDY is a symbol. It's up 4.62. But this particular pattern has a very head and shoulders type look to it. But it doesn't have to break the neckline of 159. But I think it can stay in a trading band for a little longer. The weekly chart's very good. I got nothing wrong. If you're in it, I would stay long. I would take a little bit off if it drops under 168. But in the meantime, I'd stay long. If you're looking to get in, I think it's in this. I, I could make it an oval pattern. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because it definitely has this def defined uh, a rising wedge, for, uh, well, a cone formation. So it's stuck there, and I think it'll come back into it like this. So I'm just going to say, to add to it right now, I'd much rather look at an option, and we can do that tomorrow. I'll look at it again. But I'm just saying to you, uh, I like it very much. If you want to buy it right at this moment as a brand new position, if you had to buy it at 179, I would give it about a three-point stop and have a trading stop because I think it'll be back at the 170, uh, 176 area um, over the next week and a half. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Really nice chart formation. Uh, let's see what else we got. Okay, I've written it all down. Let me go through this. Uh, we did that. We did that. Did that. We did that. Oh, just to go back to Carvana, C, V, and A. Look at this. Look at the chart right now and look at... KMX. This is CarMax. So CarMax is is a much more mature company. It's been around for ever so long. I, on the, the the occasions that I've heard the CEO, he's a he's a bright cookie. He's he's not been in the game for no reason. He's been in the game because he's a survivor. And look at the way it's pulled back from the high that was made in the 150s down to the 50 level, and now it's at a, it's 82. It's coming back. But it's really tough sledding. And now it's got the pattern, the double top pattern that says it's got to, got to be careful. So I'm just trying to put it together and say, I'm putting it, uh, Carvana, together with CarMax, which is a, a different kind of a company, but they do pretty much the same thing. And this one's not acting so well. That would be my benchmark there. Uh, questions came in. I want to get there. Oh, SDZ. This is SDZ as. Um, Constellation Brands, A, Spirits, Alcohol, Cannabis. A long time ago, someone asked me about a, a particular uh, cannabis stock. And I said, you know, just try. I, it's just too dangerous. They, they are, those stocks are, they can go down to single digits and then down to pennies. Rather stick with, and I know the difference in price is just extraordinary. And at the time, I think it was trading way back here at about 240. I think it was just above 235. I think it was above the 200 period moving average. Little did I know it would go from 235 to today's all time high of 271. CSTZ. And I've always mentioned that this is one that you just, it's like a buy and hold. If you want to be in the area, the cannabis area, this is the best way to do it. They, Constellation Brands, A shares. Spirits, alcohol, uh, cannabis, they did it absolutely right. They were the company to go to if anything in the alcohol business all the way to the 236.62 high back in, I think, January or so of 2018. And then I said, got to be careful. We never went short anything like that, but it dropped from 236 to 104. And then all the way, I kept saying, you know, this is maybe one we should have in the portfolio. Of course, there are so many didn't get it in the portfolio. Look at it. It's at an all-time high breaking out right now. That's the best way to play these things. Uh, way less risk because they got it right in the alcohol. And then I said, oh, they've moved into cannabis. I can't remember CGC. I can't remember who they bought. And I said, uh-oh, they're going to need a new learning experience. When they get this right, they're going to get it right. And I think they've got it right. They've got a mix here. So, yeah. That's what we're looking at. So that was STZ. If you're long, I wouldn't do anything with it um, other than just because you asked the question, take a little bit off for money management. But it looks, it really looks, it will fill the gap in the 250s at some point. But when? That's the big question. Next question I had here was um, team. T E A M. Uh, that's uh, Atlassian. Corporation. It did get to the Chapman Wave peak D twice. It went to 192.45 back in June, pulled back sharply from the 190th area down to the 150s and ran up again to a higher high, slightly higher high 
in the 194-ish area and peak D, and now it's starting to pull back. I just be real careful with this this area. This sector, I think, is going to be under a bit of pressure. I'll be right back for the final sector. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So you can see the S&P is now at the low of the day. But I said to you that I don't know I, I, of a time, other than one or two over the decades, where the Fed actually corresponds exactly to the low or the high. I've got other things that are telling me that if the market pulls back from here, I don't know about the depth yet. I have to see how it unfolds. But this is exactly the moment where I would expect that if there's going to be something that happens to the downside, it has to be a news event that is pervasive. It has to stay that way as a, as a, as a dark news cloud cover for a, like a week and a half to really sustain a downside move because the flat stochastic at 94 percent is fabulous to get it back under 80 percent you're going to have to have some bad news so yes as i said we are short based on other other things we've got a fairly tight stop 
But we'll see what happens. The other short we had is just working fantastically. We just got about a couple of pennies. We got stopped out yesterday. We have a new entry point if we can get it today. I don't know if we will. But those are the first shorts we've had in quite a while. Most of we are looking at long positions. We want to add to long positions. But I think that there are signs that there is some overbought situation. If there is a move at the, at, after 2.30 this afternoon where the Dow is either up 60 or more points and holding, that's really good action. But if it's minus 60 or more and you've got the semiconductors together going down as well as I want to see what happens with the QQQ, that's going to be the thing that says, OK, now we can pull back some. But it's going to take a lot to get these technicals to turn negative, And that has to do with the dark news cover. In other words, the market must see that the cover the Fed is saying, this could be the hurt now because it's ready to hurt now. But thank you for saying, so, all right, that's the one for the rest of the day. Check out Hope. Get two bet back tomorrow. And we got.